Welcome to Minding the Gap, video and podcast series brought to you by Behavioral Sciences of Alabama. I am Paul Bakke, licensed counselor of behavioral sciences, and I am joined as usual with uh, by Dr. David Barnhart, also a licensed counselor here at Behavioral Sciences. And we are happy to, uh, to, to give you some information today about Dr. Barnhart. I'll let you uh, tell them what's going on today, what we're going to talk about. Well, you and I and, and the rest of our uh, professional group here has been, um, you know, obviously we've been walking, walking through this COVID period since when? Was it the end of March? Paul, was the end of March, March we yeah. started doing this? And March. Then, uh, people, we had these shutdowns and uh, kids were doing virtual school and it was uh, problematic, still is problematic. Uh, so uh, people are doing combinations. Sometimes they go to the, the building and have school uh, and they go home and they have virtual school. Sometimes they have a hybrid model and they're doing both well. If you didn't have attention deficit disorder to start with, you're struggling now because there's so many spinning plates that uh, kids and their parents are having to keep up that um, they lose track. Uh, teachers do things differently. Uh, if they're putting information on a website with uh, whatever the syllabus, if they're sophisticated enough to have a syllabus or a lesson plan or a weekly set of assignments, they're not necessarily showing up on a website in the right place, in the same place. Uh, some teachers are saying things over Zoom meetings. Okay, here's the assignment. <laughs> they're telling people what to do or they're sending it an email. I mean, it's coming from, and I'm exaggerating, 57 different directions, and it's impossible to keep more than five to seven chunks of information in conscious awareness at one time. So kids forget, literally forget, parents forget, literally forget, because we can't keep all of that information uh, in our conscious awareness. So it's confusing. Uh, and, and therefore what happens is sitting down to do a class or to do homework uh, in front of a computer has some aversive um, uh, feelings associated with it. It's frustrating mm -hmm. and it's boring often people who are really good at being able to present things in a format like this, and I'm not saying we're particularly good uh, at doing it, but uh, teachers switch from uh, getting down beside somebody, yeah, with a desk or-, or yeah, I'm up here at the board, walking over, pointing to their paper. It's yeah. much more and interactive. Kids are kids. I've heard this a lot from kids. You know, I'm used to raising my hand and the teacher mm -hmm. coming over and mm -hmm. looking at my work and being able mm -hmm. to tell me things. And so it's all you just even just knew if you were pretty good at it. It's it's an adjustment. It it's, is. It's new, and you have to think about it. I'm not in. We've talked, I've talked about this a lot, autopilot a little bit. You know, we want to mm -hmm. be oh, used to this, just go to school, sit down at my desk. Mm -hmm. I, go, I start working and I don't have to think about mm -hmm. anything else. Now they're having to think about the process. Yes. So what you're saying is the frustration is what we've been talking about before and this flood of chemicals mm -hmm. that the kids are getting because they're connected, they're associating school and Zoom and with, this is frustrating, I'm not sure how to do this, I'm not confident, I don't like it. And so what do kids do when they're frustrated and have to do more, have used more mental and emotional energy, they, they wanna feel better. And so they, they get distracted, they think about playing video games, they, you know. For me, when I was in school, it was, it was thinking about my baseball game, you know, that was my 
that made me feel better about being in school. You know, yeah, but, yeah, I can now, tolerate this because right, I play baseball. Just, 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 mm -hmm. just, I can't wait till this happens. Right, they're going. I got my video game right over there mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. really makes me happy, and I can't stop thinking about wanting to play that. You know, and and it's a reality. It's not. I'm gonna wait till it's there. So it's distracting. Distracting. Even within here, we are. You and I are talking within this little frame right? Uh, I can't, I can't, if I get up and go get something, uh, I go out of the frame. And one of the requirements is you got to have your camera on. So we know you're in class. Mm -hmm. Right? So you got to watch your eyes. Let's make sure you're not going. Yeah, they, they interviewed the, it was a news uh, report, and they interviewed some students. Mm hmm about about it and they were talking about i got my phone right here um you know they've got all these things that they can get distracted by mm -hmm. um that, that was pretty normal for them to be doing even texting each other while while they're in class yes yes you know, it's hard to pay attention to that when you're doing that but, but we have the access to all of it you know mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so it's just you know think of think about um when we add the cassette players the cassette tapes you know you, you press play and you listen you listen to the whole thing mm -hmm. you might fast forward through a song or something like that mm -hmm. the record player you put the needle down and you listen to the whole and then we got the cd and then you could pick every song you can't and the more access we have to things the more choices we have the more of stress there is because you don't have to sit and tolerate a song or a show and we mm -hmm. stream it it's very convenient in a lot of ways, but right now kids are not really as good because they don't have to do that of being able to just focus their attention on one thing without having 10 other options. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all of that together makes it difficult. So it's, that's the first part of this process to, to talk about is that's pretty, it's pretty usual or normal. We, we try to stay away from the use use the word normal uh <laughs> yes much. but it's it's it is normal for a kid to be distracted and have a difficult time with this yeah know? just like an adult <laughs> we we uh we can only hold on to so much which if we think about it the part of the constraint is working memory i keep referring to this five to seven chunks of information so what we have in working memory is actually what we have in our conscious awareness and if I'm here and my dog is over here, it comes up and puts its head on my knee, which happens. Or if it's a great Dane, it puts its head right here. <laughs> I saw that yesterday. <laughs> it's like, okay. And the dog is right here looking at this kid, right? Uh, well, that's another piece of information in the kid's conscious awareness. And whatever that kid had on their mind, this, this stimulus kicks something out of working memory. Right. So this is, this is how distraction works. Right. Something drops out and I forget what I'm doing. I, you know, I, I miss that piece. And yeah. with, with this stuff, this technology that we're doing, uh, we're pretty fortunate because we're wired into a pretty stable network. Uh, so there aren't these glitchy uh, uh, pauses, like I'm talking with a client uh, and they're on their phone uh, having a conversation. I can see them and their face freezes and they're still talking, but I miss a complete sentence. Right, right. Yeah. And I have to say, I'm sorry, can, I, can missed that, that? I missed that last right. part. Right. Uh, it's, yeah, and that's upsetting when you, because you can't just have a conversation. You don't have mm -hmm. to when you're in the same room with someone. Yes, you don't. You don't. You, we don't freeze and go. Uh, uh, you know, it doesn't <laughs> yeah, sound yeah. like that. Not usually. Usually, not usually. Not, usually, if, if it does, then there's another. There's another problem. <laughs> yeah, there. that's uh, that therapist was drinking or something. I don't know what that <laughs> what that was. <laughs> but, so, uh, yeah, but, and, and and I think about too. You know, before before the pandemic. 
uh, kids would come to me, you know, parents with issues that are going on and it's the distraction is the other kid that they're talking to mm -hmm. or that, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's other people, yeah. you know, and then wor working on focusing on and not talking while the teachers and the teachers going, Hey, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. stop talking, you know, that kind of thing. That was the, the biggest problem mm -hmm. or just drifting off, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Drifting off yeah. Into, into space. Mm -hmm. But now there's other things to capture attention. Amazing. Um, yeah. So at home. So, so part of it is, is creating an environment as much as you can free of as free as possible right. of, of right. distractions. Yeah. And part, and you know, our brains are, are have neuroplasticity and we can actually learn uh, to focus attention, to get better at, uh, at doing things like, paying attention during a Zoom class or to be on task with homework. And so uh, you and I and, and our group have uh, a number of strategies that, that we've used to help kids learn how to stay focused and to get through their work more quickly with less emotional upset and conflict uh, we've, we started doing that kind of work, uh, many years ago, helping children in classrooms, uh, learn how to be more on task, mm -hmm. for example. And, uh, so you and I have talked about this, uh, uh, strategy that we use to help kids and it's applicable and we use it actually with uh, what's going on today with these uh, Zoom meetings. Right, so, it's applicable to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, many, and, many things. And, yeah. and originally you, it, was, it was designed for teachers. Yes, right? it was, uh -huh. yes. And then we would say, well, it's designed for teachers, share it with the teacher, you know, they mm -hmm. may be able to use it. Mm -hmm. You know, some teachers are kind of set in their ways and they've got their program and they may not mm -hmm. be interested, but some folks mm -hmm. would say, oh, yeah, I want to use that, you know, because I mm -hmm. want to do what works and that kind of thing. But then we would say you can use it at home with behaviors, homework. So it's applicable everywhere. And it I want you to tell the story about where that started when you were you told me the story about the when you're the substitute teacher. Oh, my. Yes. And the class was uh, yeah, yeah. getting rowdy because because, of course, you have a substitute teacher. Yes. No work. Yes. yes. No, yes. And that's the that, not regular school. I mean, we get to just talk and do whatever we want to. And. And we're, we don't have to do any work, you know, which is a typical mentality when yes. the substitute teacher comes in. So here comes yeah. the behaviorist. <laughs> oh my! Oh the my! The behaviorist is teaching us now. Yeah, yeah. We're in trouble. So tell okay. That story. All right. So, so I this is decades ago. I'm doing uh, uh, substitute teaching. So a teacher had broken their hip and had a surgery, and they needed somebody to come in and teach math. Now I'm not a math major. I was pretty good in math. Uh, but they needed a substitute. And so turned out I'm teaching geometry and, and uh, regular math and trigonometry and physics. I, I had five preparations a day and I, I was good in science and good math. So, uh, so I did this, I go in and the first thing that happened is I have this group of ninth graders uh, who there must have been 35 kids in the room. <laughs> And the, the teacher, bless his heart, <laughs> before me uh, that, that had broken his hip was, um, had a difficult time regulating the, the classroom uh, behavior. So they were noisy and, you know, and so I show up, I'm a uh, substitute teacher, and, but, you know, I have a master's degree in, in um in uh, counseling and I've had a lot of training in behavior modification and had worked with families. So I'm, I'm kind of a ringer, nobody knew this, but I go in and, and I, I had this first day's experience and I, and I thought, okay, well, we're gonna do a behavioral program in here uh, tomorrow. So I went home and I uh, got out a response cost strategy and actually applied it to the whole classroom. And essentially what I did was I said, okay, we're gonna start the classroom with uh, 10 points. And I made a little flip chart. So we're showing the number 10, that's, 
This 10 represents 10 minutes at the end of the period that we're going to have that's free time in which we can play games, we can play cards, you can talk to each other. And for every five minutes that goes by, I'm going to flip another card. And we can have more minutes. So during this 50 minute time frame, or however long it was, uh, we can add another up to 10 minutes or so. I don't remember what it was, but it got pretty hefty, you know, so we could have a big free time by learning to be on task. The whole thing was on task. And there were basically uh, three, three rules. Uh, don't talk without raising your hand. Stay on task. Uh, don't get up out of your seat. <laughs> I mean, there were like three, three things. And for every five minutes that went by, I'm flipping this chart. Now, it's a group contingency because the whole class would get the reward or they would lose points. So I set it up. And the first thing that happened, Paul, was this girl comes into class late and everybody's quiet. And they're doing their work. They're doing this work, this math that everybody hated this class. You know, they're working on this thing. And this girl look, walks in and she goes, what's going on? <laughs> what are you right. all doing? You, you don't have to do that. That was an interesting comment. And, and I don't remember what people said to her, but essentially she got the message to sit down and shut up <laughs> and work, which she did. She wasn't sure what was going on. She was looking around and she was You're going to cost us our reward. Exactly. Well, positive peer pressure. It, that's exactly right. It was so quiet in this room. And it, it would, you know, they'd lose some and they'd gain some, but essentially it was working pretty well. You know, and the principal of the school comes by because this, he thought the classroom was empty. <laughs> he, he was accustomed to hearing all of this noise from this class and and he walked in he sticks Barnhart's his head lost in. the class <laughs> Barnhart has lost he the took them all class they're, they all, they're they've escaped that's right they went outside you know <laughs> they went to mcdonald's or something he stuck his head in and he said oh oh i'm sorry i i i, I thought the classroom was empty and he turned around and walked off and we talked about it later uh but uh, it was interesting because they got really in the groove. They started doing well in math. It's amazing what happens when you start concentrating and practicing things. And I gave them, I did things differently. So you could have more than one opportunity to uh, correct your homework and improve it. So you can turn it in. I'd look at it. You could go back and correct it, come back. Uh, it was about learning from feedback. But that's what, that's what good behaviorists do. It's all about feedback and it's about setting it up so the kids will be successful with it. Right. Because when they're successful, they don't get that uncomfortable feeling. They get, oh, I can do this. Yes. You know, they get some thoughts that, and some experience that says, I don't have to be distracted and so forth because mm -hmm. my mind can focus on this and I can do this. So, so that's what this all is all about is it's that's right. conditions mm -hmm. for success. That's right. Okay. So, let's, so let's talk a little bit about that. So the first part of it would be setting up the expectations. Yes, yes. Exactly what this, mm -hmm. uh, this should look like. So I'm going to mm -hmm. share my screen because I've got, I've got this PDF. Um, While you're doing that, uh, one of the things that happened a few weeks into this uh, strategy is I, I go in one day and this, this kid says, uh, it, it was Mr. Barnhart then. He said, Mr. Barnhart, uh, we don't really need that anymore. Oh, yeah. I, said, I said, what? What do you mean? He said, we don't need for you to do that anymore. We're, we're going to do our work. And, and other kids were going, yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we don't need that. I said, okay, well, here's what we're going to do. We won't keep track of it, but when we get to the end of the period, it will just take some free time anyhow. <laughs> so we did. Right. And, and that's how we, uh, we finished it. Yeah. And, and that's where, you know, so, some parents, because this is about rewards. It's about 
because it, it, when someone's young and they're not really developed yet, they're not going to be motivated by it. it's the right thing to do. I just should do mm -hmm. this because my mm -hmm. mom and dad tell me to do it. Or my te teacher says it. It's got to be something that's in it for them because mm -hmm. they're they're dealing with an uncomfortable feeling. They're dealing with a difficult, you know, it's hard to do this. I'd rather not. So there better be something in it for me that's 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 that that means something to me. So mm -hmm. coming up with the rewards that means something to the child is is important. Mm -hmm. uh, but once they get good at it, the reward is not as necessary. Because, exactly. the, because it becomes internal. Yes, it does. You know, and it's not the reverse. And sometimes as parents, we say, well, you should just do it because you know, you'll know you feel better. Well, they haven't felt better yet. You know, <laughs> no, just, no, no, no. Well, uh, so we tell parents, well, you should go to work and not expect a paycheck. Right. That's the way our world works. You know? <laughs> we get, we, we're based on a reward system. Yeah. We do what we need to do. We get stuff. We don't. Mm -hmm. We don't. That's so, okay. So the first part of that would be things like, if you can, can you see this? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, clear. Setting the clear mm -hmm. expectations, body mm -hmm. squared in the seat, mm -hmm. facing the, facing the, maybe the video screen, not the teacher in this mm -hmm. situation. If, if parents are teaching at home, that, cause it's a homeschool thing too, you know, mm -hmm. it might be facing the teachers, whatever it is, listening without talking, raising the hand without blurting out eyes on the class or very specific. And then it goes into some other things. And we're going to share this on our, on the, um, we're going to share this for people that want this uh, PDF. Yes. For other things like chores and other behaviors that are ex expected. It's just important to be specific about exactly what behavior we're looking for. Sure. Sure. Parents use this idea of uh, teaching their kids how to sit in a restaurant back in the days when we sat in restaurants uh, without creating havoc <laughs> with, you know, being able to sit there and finish a meal, you know, without uh, too much disruption and running around, uh, you know, unrestrained. Uh, one of the things, let me just mention this and you may be getting to it, but when we set this up, uh, usually the parents, we coach the parents on how to do this, but the, the idea is, you know, I'm, I, I don't like getting on your back. I don't want to be a nag and I want this to be more positive for us. And so, uh, so this is what we'd like to do. I'm, I'm not going to get on your back for being off task. I'm, uh, if I do, if you do now, I, I just throw this in, it's not in our list here, but uh, if you do, if I do that, if I get on your back, if I criticize you about how you're doing things, I'll give you a dollar. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That is in there later. That's in there a little bit okay. later. Okay. Okay. Good. But, Keep but going. what you're talking about is you're, and this is for teachers too. This is uh -huh. kind of where we've talked about it with teachers and te some teachers go, yes, I don't have to call them out all the time. Hey, get back yes. to work. You know, oh, stressful. You know, it's, it's not it, because that is a distraction. Yes. So the whole idea is it's unobtrusive. It's tr it's an effort to be to not get in the way right. of what they're doing. Uh, that it increases their their distractibility. So yes. yeah. So it's um, so it's it's really um, designed to have a system that you and the, your child know that nobody else has to know about. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a there, it's an understood way of of correction that's not. It's negative feed, just feedback it's, feed, it's, feed, it's feedback yeah. that's that's mm -hmm. just this just is right this you're off you know you're it's the signal is you're off instead you're off of task. Uh -huh. get back on you know you know right. mad yeah. yeah then 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 we're then the child is dealing with our anger and you know they get defensive and now they're really off right right okay so so we got the expectations all right moving down to the track to, to the tracking and correction technique we got a we got an index card and I didn't have a pair of scissors. So I just ripped these. Uh, I do that in the this office. Is, this is I how fast ripped. you can do it. I did it in about, <laughs> about 10 seconds. So, right, right. So you take an index card and you decide um, how many mistakes getting off task, whatever it is mm -hmm. that are, that are allowed 
to where if you just have one left, you there's success. That's, yes. the, that's the key is you want to have success. Right. So if you're starting out and a child is very distracted, you need to have a lot of strips. Yes. Uh, so that so that they have a chance to mess up because they're going to. Yeah. And it's no big deal. The only right. time it's really a big deal is when they don't have any left. That's, that's when they don't get the reward. That's right. So, so you got them in the bottom of the card and the child is off task and you just simply tear it off mm -hmm. and throw it away. And the child can hear the tearing. All right. So that's the cue back. You don't have to say, get back on task. They know back on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so now we, now, pract we practice that. And you practice, right? Yeah, right. and, and yeah. Get to that later too. Okay. As, as you're, as all of this is, and reward the practice. We'll talk about that later too. Is that yes. is that you get the reward for just practicing it? We're just gonna practice it today. It doesn't even mm -hmm. matter. It doesn't matter how many you got left. You mm -hmm. know, that's mm -hmm. just you're just participating and practicing it. You get the reward. You know, so it's so mm -hmm. you reinforce. You get set it up to where it's positives that, that we call that antecedent conditions conditions prior to the, the activity mm -hmm. set up the conditions so that oh this is a good thing positive yes good attitude you know you're going to do this because we said you're going to do it you know mm -hmm. start mm -hmm. out that way we talk about harsh startup and our mm. this must be bad you know <laughs> yeah yeah they're on defense right. already oh, this is gonna we know you can do it it's you know we're going to keep track of it you know we're going to uh Give you a lot of chances to kind of kind of make mistakes that's okay mm -hmm. we want you to be successful and if you do this then you get you know the treasure chest at the end of the day or points towards something or something uh that they can see that they've done well okay right, so right so there's no verbal correction no reprimand just you're gonna off. lose another strip yeah. No, that's not, that's not how we Take do it. Take a look at what I'm doing right now. Okay. You know, oh. that, with that attitude towards them, like, yeah, I'm taking a strip. Now it's, like, <laughs> just, it's no, it's just, it's okay. It's yeah. just gone. Yeah. yeah. Just feedback. Right. Just, it's just feedback. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so then uh, the goal, as I said, is to have at least one strip left. That is success. That's a success. Right. They lost all of them, but one they're in good shape. Yes. Okay. So, so one of the things that you're doing is we're trying to establish an, a baseline mm -hmm. to know ex how many we need. Where, where are they? Mm -hmm. You know, and you can kind of observe them. You know, you can see if they're looking to see how many strips they've got left and they're purposefully, you know, <laughs> not doing it. You know, you know that. They're aware it's not a it's not a distraction thing. They're just trying to get away with it as much as possible. You can kind of see that, right? Or you can mm -hmm. see sometimes that they're just off and they just can't help it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's all part of you know watching your your feedback is observing them, and you're trying to decide what is the number that makes sense mm -hmm. um, uh, to start with, because you're because the goal is to continue to reduce the number over the weeks. Point. This is a very critical point. <laughs> Critical point. It's not, yeah. you're not just going, oh, you know, 15 every day forever. You know, it's a, he does 15. Well, let's mm -hmm. say he's got, you start with 15 and he's got a, a, an average of two or three left. Mm -hmm. Makes sense to go down to 13 the next week. Mm -hmm. Small increments, not, uh, he did well, we're going to go down to five. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's mm -hmm. too many. Small increments and rewarding the success. Uh, consistently. You want the kids to be bought in. You want the kids to think mm -hmm. I can do this. I don't have to be perfect. If mistakes are just a strip of paper, that's gone. That's it. Right. Um, now, sometimes I've experienced where a parent will come back and they'll say, they want to argue about taking the strip mm -hmm. they, because they're so conditioned that negative the negative feedback and so averse mm -hmm. to correction mm -hmm. that they want to argue about the strip i didn't do that you know how would you handle that 
well, we, we make that one of the rules. <laughs> so when we're talking about it, uh, so we're trying to teach the child to regulate their behavior, essentially, to control their impulses. And so uh, up front, we'll say, we're, this is just feedback. And so when we practice it, we're illustrating it's just feedback. It's not, you know, it's not a, it's not a punishment. Uh, because we're going to start out with a large enough number that you're probably going to have at least one left. So, so if you know that about your child, uh -huh. that they're really having a hard time with those kinds of things, that would be a real important thing to practice. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and all right, we're going to practice you getting off. Right. And me taking this. Mm -hmm. And then you going back to work. Mm -hmm. Get off. Back to work. That's great. Uh huh. That's great. You accepted that you were off and you got back to work. You didn't argue. You mm -hmm. good attitude. Yeah, that's what we want. If you, if you, that's what you know. So you're practicing uh, that. Um, sometimes I have, and this is this allows for some flexibility. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get a kid that's so has such a hard time with that. Yes. That you know that sometimes. Uh, you can reward um, accepting. Mm -hmm. That's the behavior you're looking for. Yes. If you accept being off and getting back to work, uh, that's rewarded. So mm -hmm. you're you're getting you're you you. This is the problem. You know, the, the ultimate problem is getting to work. The one that gets in the way is that oh gosh you know why why did I, I argue you know I, I can't handle that you know I can't handle being corrected. Mm -hmm. It's target that behavior, target, target the acceptance and then re and reward that. Some, and early on, if it's a big problem, mm -hmm. if you accept it, you know, within 10 seconds or whatever, then you get a strip back or you, you don't lose it or, you know, something, yeah, yeah. something you're trying to reward, boiling it down. As far get, as you, can. Get a, you get, uh, you get two M&Ms. <laughs> you get, there's, there's, uh, there's yeah. some incentive Right. Uh, yeah. Regulate it's your emotions. Fun and you don't argue. Mm -hmm. Two M&Ms. Boom. Right there. So, yeah. so, so, I, but I know, I know that that's a lot of times when kids, you know, do this, that's, that's sometimes a problem. Yes. Uh, okay. So you're setting up the success and, uh, and then you're, uh, and hopefully sustained motivation because when they're successful at, they got one strip left. Mm hmm. They, they, their confidence goes up because not because they think they can do it or not because you said they can do it. They did it. Yes. They did it. There's no substitute for doing it. All right. And so, and that eventually we hope, and in most cases becomes more internal when yes. they do it over and over again, like you were saying mm -hmm. with the students, they said, we didn't need any more. They, they regulated themselves enough to say mm -hmm. this, we don't, we got it. This is, this is a reward to just be able to do it. We're able, probably making better grades. We're mm -hmm. kind of upset about you know, having to do this stupid geometry, you know, that right. I, yeah. my attitude when I was in school. Yeah. Stupid geometry, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't, what's this, what's this triangle stuff, you know, and then, then they get success with it and they go, uh -huh. Oh, you know, I see the point to that. You know, I can do this. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so it's the success want, want to have success and make it and make it as doable as possible. Kids, uh, much like the uh, example I gave of the classroom, uh, once they get into it, they enjoy using fewer strips. So we, we begin to decrease the number of strips we use based on their level of success. One way of thinking about it is the average number of strips used after a few days is probably a pretty good number that you could use uh, as a target to, sh to shoot for. So, uh, but again, as you mentioned a while ago, we don't want to go down too fast, but I like to ask kids, well, how many strips do you think we need now? You know, and let's say we're at 10 and they say, well, you know, I think I could, I think I could probably do three. And I go, yeah, you know, you know, I bet you could. Well, why don't we, why don't we just drop it down to seven just to, just to be sure. And I'll go along with that. And it just keeps the pressure off. Mm -hmm. But the concept is you're checking. What do they think 
they might be able to do. Ultimately, uh, we'll typically get down to about three. So kids, kids shape to that level pretty quickly. Uh, oftentimes, uh, we'll get down to about three and we'll sustain that for a while before we change up the, the program. But that's a, pretty, that's a pretty cool thing. So now you've trained your child to be on task. Almost to be on task nothing. and be aware. Yes, almost so nothing we do in a classroom teaches children to be on, class, on task. Not, we're not teaching them to do that. We correct them when they're off task. We're going, what are you supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. You know, we're saying oh, eyes on the paper. You know, we're doing things that actually uh, tend to reinforce off task behavior and the children become dependent. Getting a lot of attention for the off task. Yeah, they become dependent on, on the negative feedback to correct behavior, which is- All right. It's really right. So this is important. about, this is developing some awareness of themselves mm -hmm. and they're back on and if that number is going down. Um, so, so it's really, really good. And it's, and it's, and it's applicable to many different areas. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and really the thing that it's great about, you know, cause you, when you're doing anything, you're, and I ask people, you know, how are you doing on, how you doing this week? Well, I'm doing pretty good. You know, mm -hmm. I think I'm mm -hmm. doing better. Well, how do you know that? Mm -hmm. or, or, you know, I don't, I don't think I'm doing any better. You know, sometimes it doesn't feel like it's better, but if it's one strip better, it's better. Oh yeah. You can count it. Yes, you, you can, can absolutely measure the progress with, uh, with, with the strips. Yes. And, and so it gives this immediate feedback. It is getting better. And it's, it lends itself to the idea of successive approximation, which is, you know, we're not, to the goal yet but we're mm -hmm. getting closer and it's really important to recognize that we're getting getting better so we're going to make this available on our uh on our website uh we'll put it we'll put it in the blog uh behavioral sciences of alabama.com uh you could you can search for paul bakke uh licensed counselor and you're probably going to find behavioral sciences of alabama <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, but you can put behavioral sciences of Alabama or behavioral sciences, you're probably going to pop up our website and uh, just go to the blog area and there'll be a link you can download or just a copy. Uh, you also just see the, the copy of the uh, document uh, that Paul was, was sharing with us. All right, well, we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Okay, so what do you, okay. this is... Uh, you got big plans for Thanksgiving? Going going to Memphis. We're gonna go and uh, we're gonna go be in kind of separate rooms and and meet and social distance. And we've got a plan. And we may even do the uh, social distance electric slide. Wow. Uh, which is uh, I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to do that. We'll have to do it because if we can get outside, we won't have to do it. But we'll. My idea was to have you know a family in one room, family in another room. You know, spread out. And then when the music goes, people switch so that we, everybody can visit with each other. Uh -huh. After a certain amount of time, play the electric slide and we you know, okay. dance okay. on into the other room. And we, so we absolutely, you know, so we're maintaining our social distance, being safe, but being able to visit with uh, our whole family. Uh, hopefully that'll work out well. And you know, uh, we might as well make something fun out of this. Absolutely. Thing. Bakis know how to have a good time. <laughs> uh, we try. We yes, try. Yes, you do. And and you succeed. All right. Well, All right. happy Thanksgiving, everyone. When, we, when you see this, there will already have happened. So I hope you did yeah. have a Thanksgiving. Yeah. But thank you, everybody, for watching. Yeah, thanks. Bye-bye.